Hi guys. Cortana again. Right back at you with another one. This is a very personal raw video. I feel so vulnerable in this moment. Mark and I had been working on this one for some time. Attempting to make a full-length bio with a strong narrative. In the most classy and appropriate way. Paying respects to her family, and all who loved her. This is the short and sweet life tribute of the late Aaliyah. Disclaimer, everything in this small animation film is non-fictional. The characters and their plot twist are real. The illustrations in the video were not shown to duplicate or recreate her resemblance. We will make our own animations and some graphic effects to tell the story of Aaliyah. Please. For the sake of her memory and honor of her family, please write nice loving comments. Don't forget to like the video. Share it. We want as many people to know Aaliyah as possible. And subscribe. And tell us who you'd like to see in our next video. Here we go. So Miss Aaliyah Dana Hodden was born into the world on January 16, 1979. Which would make her 40 years old today. She was born in Brooklyn, New York by her parents Michael and Diane. And was born in Detroit. She is survived by her only sibling. Her big brother Rashad. Aaliyah was a singer, songwriter, actress, and model. Aaliyah would soon become a household name. Known professionally by just one name. Her name was Arabic for the highest most exalted one the best. She had always loved music since she was a baby. And pursued her singing career at just six years old. Her obvious hobby is singing. She also loved renting movies. A favorite movie of mine would be Sounds of the Lambs she said. And video games. I love video games. She had always openly expressed her deep unconditional unbreakable bond with Rashad. She writes in I quote, I'm very close to my brother. He's my best friend. She writes in I quote, My brother Rashad, I love you. You're my everything. We're very tight. He rolls with me everywhere I go. He's my Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right now, he's helping me direct my video. And my new movie Queen of the Damned. Buddies for life. Her classic street but sweet style was an understatement. A mesh of girl a tomboy if that makes sense. She could effortlessly sport a pair of baggy low-waisted pants and a crop top one day. And would glow so elegant in a Roberto Covalli dress the next. Her small petite and versatile frame provided more flexibility in her closet. She could wear anything. And looked good in whatever she put on. When she was only 12 years old, Aaliyah signed her first record contract with Jive Records. Through her uncle Barry Hankerson and Joe Hankerson. On May 24, 1994 when she was 15, Aaliyah had released her debut studio album. Age Ain't Nothing But A Number. And her obvious favorite color was black. She would always wear black. My stylist always gives me slack for it she said. Aaliyah began working and collaborating alongside fellow musician and record producer R&B artist R. Kelly. He executive produced the album. She was his prodigy. He is my mentor. Aaliyah released a statement writing, I had decided to call the album Age Ain't Nothing But A Number because I wanted the world just to enjoy the music. I am a young person obviously. I won't tell my age. I don't think it really matters anyways. I don't want the public to focus on my age. And just to enjoy the music. And respect my artistry. But rumors had surfaced that the album's title refers to her secret relationship with Robert. I think they had started to spend a little too much time together. More than I would have liked her mother said. And a marriage license was later revealed proving that Robert had married Aaliyah. Her parents had the wedding annulled. In the midst of the chaos and media circus, Aaliyah terminated her contract with Blackground Records. She cut off all personal and professional ties with Kelly and signed to a new record label. She began working on her sophomore album titled One in a Million. It was first released on August 27, 1996, by Blackground and Atlantic Records. The album was recorded from August 1995 to July 1996 with a variety of producers including Timbaland, Missy Elliott, Carl Solo, J. Dibbs, Jermaine Dupri, KG, Vincent Herbert, Rodney Jerkins, Craig King, Darren Lighty and Daryl Simmons. 
The album featured several guest vocalists, including Elliot, Timbaland, Treach and Slick Rick. One in a Million garnered generally positive reviews from music critics, including Rolling Stone who named it the 90th best album of the decade, and crushing the sophomore jinx. It was also listed as one of 33 hip-hop slash R&B albums in Rolling Stones. Essential Recordings of the 90s One in a Million debuted at number 20 on the US Billboard 200 chart, selling 40,500 copies in its opening week. 22 weeks later, the album peaked at number 18, being certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America RIAA. Within a few months, the album proved Aaliyah's breakthrough and a major milestone in the careers of Elliot and Timbaland. It was certified two times platinum on June 16, 1997. The album was also certified gold by Music Canada for shipments of 50,000 copies. One in a Million has sold over 3 million copies in the US and 8 million copies worldwide. The album produced six singles, If Your Girl Only Knew, One in a Million, Got To Give It Up, Four Page Letter, Hot Like Fire, and The One I Gave My Heart To. With the last becoming the album's highest charting single, peaking at 9 on the US Billboard Hot 100. In 2004, the album was re-released in Germany with altered artwork and again in 2006. It included the standard 17 tracks plus the bonus song Come Over. Aaliyah had released a statement calling her chemistry with fellow artists Missy Elliott and Timberland as the best to work with. I think the three of us together are unmatched. I love everything we make. We're like the hip-hop R&B dream team. Our styles of music and fashion blend so naturally. And when we come together, we always make magic. I could work with them for the rest of my life and career if I can. I hope so. I would like to work with them as long as I can. Timberland and Aaliyah had become very close through the years. He writes I would always call her Lily. Sometimes, I say baby girl. Cause I hold her near and dear to my heart like as if she was my baby girl. It's something nobody can understand but us. By 2000, Aaliyah, had two albums under her belt, and just wrapped up her first box office action film. She ditched the hip-hop baggy clothes, in exchange for a more sexy more demure look. 22 of Aaliyah's most fashion-inspiring tomboy looks. Aaliyah was beautiful, talented, and a style god. From baggy pants to oversized sweaters and her signature midriff tops, she made tomboy, chic. Her soulful music and trend-setting style still resonates today. In addition to acting, Aaliyah served as an executive producer of the film's soundtrack, where she contributed four songs. Try Again was released as a single from the soundtrack. The song topped the Billboard Hot 100, making Aaliyah the first artist to top the chart based solely on airplay, this led the song to be released in a 12 vinyl and 7 single. The music video won the Best Female Video and Best Video from a Film Awards at the 2000 MTV Video Music Awards. It also earned her a Grammy Award nomination for Best Female R&B Vocalist. The soundtrack went on to sell 1.5 million copies in the United States. After completing Romeo Must Die, Aaliyah began to work on her second film, Queen of the Damned. She played the role of an ancient vampire, Queen Akasha which she described as a manipulative, crazy, sexual being. Filming both Romeo Must Die and Queen of the Damned delayed the release of the album. Aaliyah's self-titled third and final studio album also called The Red Album, was released on July 7, 2001, by Black Ground Records and Virgin Records America. Aaliyah started to work on the album in 1998, but rescheduled its recording around her developing film career. She resumed recording in 2000 at Sing Sing Studios in Australia, where she shot her role for the 2002 film Queen of the Damned during the day and recorded songs at night. Through her recording contract with Black Ground Records, the singer worked primarily with the record label's in-house crew of writers and producers, including Budda, J-Dub, Rapture, and Eric Seats, as well as longtime collaborator Timbaland. Aaliyah received highly positive reviews from music critics. Aaliyah also met entrepreneur Damon Anthony Dash, who would become her boyfriend and future husband. It seems as though life couldn't be better for the singer.
Aaliyah had been anxious to finally start working with Jet Li on Romeo Must Die. It was the first for the singer. And her acting debut. It was number two in the box office. And the action film grossed $91 million in the box office. Aaliyah had released a statement. Writing in part. I was raised and trained to be a full-on thoroughbred entertainer. It's just in my blood. I always knew I would do something in the acting world. I received so many scripts. It was just a matter of finding the right movie at the right time. In divine timing. I wanted a character that directly parallels me as much as possible. Trish was that for me. She is strong. She is independent. She's a go-getter. She knows what she wants. She is tough. Which all of these things I felt described me. That's when I knew I was right for the part. She writes working with Jet was fun for me. I learned so much from him. They kissed in a deleted never released scene. We decided to not put it on the movie she said. Everybody's energy was so warm and welcoming. To be my first movie, I felt so comfortable. I didn't use a stunt double she added. I did all the stunts myself. I got bruised up some. But I wanted to do my own stunts. I just wanted to be hands-on with the film. I had so much fun. I really enjoyed myself. Jet is a veteran. I was so nervous at first working alongside all these well-trained actors. But they made me feel so good about it. I don't want to label the film as one thing she said. I feel like the film has so many different colors. There's some action. We have comedy. There is some drama in there as well. It has so many layers to it. It's just a gumbo movie if that makes sense. My dream was to have Jet in my video. I never thought we would have done the video and both star in the movie together. A dream come true for me. I achieved more than I dreamt of. I'm truly blessed. We worked so hard on it. And the movie has been received well. They love my part in it. I feel like all the hard work I put in truly paid off. Try Again was released as a single from the soundtrack. The song topped the Billboard Hot 100, making Aaliyah the first artist to top the chart based solely on airplay. The soundtrack sold 1.5 million copies in the United States. Appearing on BET's 106 End Park on August 21, 2001, Aaliyah announced that shooting of the video for Rock the Boat was to be directed by Hype Williams and that filming would begin the following day. Nearly 60 people worked on the video in the Bahamas. On August 22, she filmed underwater shots for the video in Miami, Florida. On August 23, Aaliyah and employees of Virgin Records America flew to the Bahamas on two flights using a Fairchild Metro 3, chartered through Sky Limo. She was scheduled to leave the Bahamas on August 26, but chose to leave the day before since she had finished early. Williams recalled, Aaliyah left mid-production, so we were still shooting when she left. When discussing working with Aaliyah on the video Williams stated, those four days were very beautiful for everyone. We all worked together as a family, Williams said Monday, adding that the camaraderie on the set was a refreshing change from the usual shoot. The last day, Saturday, was one of the best I've had in this business. Everyone felt part of something special. In a press release a spokesperson from Aaliyah's label, Blackground Records, said it was too soon to say what would become of the footage. The music video made its world premiere on Bet's Access granted on October 9, 2001. Bet producer Kevin Taylor, who was in the Bahamas filming the shoot, described the clip as gorgeous and sensual. Fatima released a statement. She writes in I quote, Aaliyah is on my same wavelength. We are so similar. She's got this delicate balance of being sexy without being overly sexy and over the top. It always would appropriately and naturally come together. We dress alike. And our dances match and mirror one another. So working with her doesn't ever feel like work. Not only that. But we're so close. I love her like a daughter. Diana requested that Aaliyah be covered up as much as possible. She didn't want her daughter Aaliyah showing a lot of skin since the song was already so sensual. So we dressed and styled Aaliyah the way Diane would. Fatima added I love their mother-daughter bond. I've never seen anything like it. 
The fact that Aaliyah still listens to her mommy even as a 22-year-old woman is unbelievable. I'm obsessed with their bond. And we are all one big happy family on and off the set. We are all so close. Aaliyah performed in underwater scene. She used a breath regulator but had some difficulty with it. So we decided that she would just hold her breath underwater. Which is better I think. It's not so appealing seeing this large mouthpiece on the scene anyway. But we got it done. We got some really pretty shots out of it Aaliyah said. The video is beautiful. Diana released a statement. She writes I quote. I'm always so proud of Aaliyah. I'm proud of everything she does obviously. She could have chosen any career choice. It doesn't matter to me. I would be proud of her no matter what. With the green screen scene, it was replaced by beautiful big ocean waves. For this part, we wanted heavier makeup because that particular scene was the most artistic Christopher Maldonado said. Which the underwater scene we used very minimal makeup because I knew she'd be in water. And I attempted to attach some rhinestones around her eyes but the glue wasn't strong enough for the water. Fatima writes I spent all day long with her. Everybody was so exhausted and anxious to leave she said. But we made unforgettable memories. I can just remember kissing Aaliyah on the cheek she added. I didn't go with Aaliyah because I had come with other transportation. She said she loved me. We kissed each other. We hugged one another. I took one last picture of everybody with my camera. Aaliyah smiled. And held up the peace sign. Then they got on the boat. It was the last time I saw her she added. I never would have thought it would be the last time I saw her. News spread quickly of Aaliyah's tragic death through the radio stations. She was killed on the twin-engine Cessna on her way back to the United States. The plane was said to be overloaded. Eight others perished with Aaliyah including makeup artist Christopher Maldonado. Aaliyah died instantly. The pilot was inexperienced and drugs were found in his system. Aaliyah was just 22 years old. Aaliyah and the eight others on board. Pilot Luis Morales III, hairstylist Eric Foreman, Anthony Dodd, security guard Scott Gallen, family friend Keith Wallace, and Black Ground Records employees Douglas Kratz and Gina Smith were all killed. Tributes of the singer poured in from all over the world. Timberland writes a part of me is dead. R&B is dead. Years after her death, Aaliyah is still truly missed and is still heavily influencing the world, its culture, and contemporary rhythm and blues. And is one of the first pioneers of popular R&B. If not the first. Sells for the album skyrocketed to number one. And her 2002 film Queen of the Damned also held the number one spot. A testament of how much she'll truly be missed. She truly without a doubt was one in a million. No pun intended. Sean Combs released a statement. He writes I loved her. We all loved her. She was a walking angel. She would light up a room he said. But not in a diva-like way. It felt like she was so special. There was just something about her. If you ever got the chance to meet her, you know what I mean. She was so silly. She made everybody laugh. There are so many things I can say I love about her. We don't have enough time. She was just that once every 100 years type of person. That special person you only see a few times. Mary J released a statement. She writes in I quote. I feel like her death could have been prevented. It's so unfair. She was a young lady that went after her dreams. She never gave up. And a living example that you can do whatever you want to do no matter the circumstances she added. You can fall and get right back up again. And you can completely change the trajectory of your life. But it's up to you she added. Timberland said I'm in so much pain. I can't really get out there and speak to the fans right now. It will take some time. I need more time. It's just not the same. Nothing is the same. Missy Elliott writes I know that she's no longer with us. But I believe she's here in spirit. And I know I'll see her again soon. I'll be her permanent cheerleader here on this earth until then. I love you. She added I think the biggest most important lesson we all should learn here is that we all need to cherish one another while we're still here. And don't take anything for granted. 
Her funeral service was surrounded by devoted loyal fans to pay their respects and say their final goodbyes. 22 white doves were released into the sky. One bird for each year of Aaliyah's life. A horse-drawn carriage carried the singer to her final resting place. Her family sang her song one in a million as she was carried away. Aaliyah was laid to rest with her favorite stuffed animal alongside her. A teddy bear given to her when she was just a little girl. It's her favorite thing. She slept with it every night. Fans used promotional pictures from the new album as props for her mural. And a giant airbrushed picture of the album's front cover was painted onto the wall. A posthumous album I Care For You was released later with bonus tracks and never before released Aaliyah songs. A posthumous music video was released for her song Miss You. A video tribute to Aaliyah with guest appearances from Queen Latifah, Tweet, and DMX. A young girl who packed a lot into a short life. And made it all look easy. And made her mark on the world. Your class and poise are unparalleled. And won't ever be redone. It's not humanly possible. The world is a better place because you were here. We're struggling to survive without you. But we're trying. You're our fallen angel. At last, you have your wings. I love you. Please. Share the video. We want everybody to know Aaliyah. And transcend her eternal love and legacy as far as possible.